Okay. Bill Gates helped usher in the digital revolution at Microsoft and has spent the decades since exploring and investing in innovative solutions to some of the world's toughest problems, global poverty, disease, and the coronavirus pandemic, which he spent nearly $2 billion on. Now he's focusing on climate change, agreeing with the overwhelming majority of scientists who warn of a looming climate disaster. President Trump believes climate change is a hoax. We know this because he has said it over and over again. So Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and that and a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money making industry. OK, it's a hoax. A string of hacked private emails between global climate change scientists in the U.S. and Europe, which have cast doubts on the very science this summit is based on. The emails seem to show that some of the world's top experts decided to exclude or manipulate some research that didn't help prove global warming exists. 1998 was the hottest year since record keeping began, but the temperature went down the next year and it's only spiked a couple of times since. An email from 1999 shows scientists worked hard to demonstrate an upward trend. They talk of using a trick to hide the decline in global temperatures. So we all know there really actually are only two views on climate change. You either believe it's happening and there are consequences. Sea level rise, temperature rise, floods and droughts. Or you believe it's a hoax. Apologies for the language there, but I thought it would help set the context. I do believe that uh, uh, the issue of global warming has been politicized. I think that there are a substantial number of scientists who have manipulated uh, data uh, so that they will have dollars rolling into their, uh, to their projects. And I think we're seeing it almost weekly or even daily scientists who are coming forward and questioning uh, the original uh, idea that man-made global warming is what is causing the, the climate to change. Fortunately, another storm called Hurricane Maria barreling toward Puerto Rico at this hour. The storm is already a Category 5. It's still getting strength. It's expected to approach the island of Puerto Rico by Wednesday morning. Well, so many deadly storms in the past two months, it's not surprising. Many have sought to make a political point or draw a connection between them. Many are saying, Facebook is full of this, that the storms are proof of global warming, never mind their lectures that weather is not climate. Um, what do you think about when people say, um, look, this is not settled science? Yeah, I, so what's happening here is there are people who have cultural, political, religious, economic philosophies that they then invoke when they want to cherry pick one scientific result or another. On climate change, uh, I saw your the CBS interview, I'm still a little confused. So the don't be confused. But on your, but when you, look, when you look at like NASA, or you look at uh, uh, the Energy Department and what what your own government, your own scientists have said about it, they said it's sort of indisputable that uh, humans have contributed to, to global warming in, in big ways. Well, I do think we've would, contributed. Would, we certainly contribute. I mean, there's certain pollutants that go up, and there are certain things that happen, certain things we do that if we weren't here, certainly they say the overwhelming. Imagine, 30 years ago, no one spoke of climate change. In fact, no one spoke of fake news either. Yet today, the pair are uneasy bedfellows. If this is about a thousand years ago, this is really warm. This is the medieval warm period, then, is it? This is sometimes referred to as the medieval warm period. So I, I suppose I can see a trend in here. It's just a bit warmer here. That's right. And it's a little bit cooler along here in the 17th and 18th centuries, which is referred to as the Little Ice Age. So can solar variations and volcanic eruptions explain this? It can do a pretty good job. So if we ask a computer what it would predict over that period with just the solar and volcanic influences, and we'll come up with this blue curve here.
заставить их использовать сегодня энергию солнца, которой в Африке достаточно. Кто-нибудь объяснил? The United States sets out on the road to cut a greenhouse gases in half. We will strictly control coal-fired power generation projects. And I'm, I'm really uh, thrilled uh, by the game-changing announcement uh, that Joe Biden has, has just made. And I, I'm very proud that the UK is doing the same. For Australia, it is not a question of if or even by when for net zero. Wir brauchen vor allen Dingen Solidarität mit den Entwicklungsländern. Als Industrieländer haben wir uns verpflichtet, bis 2020 jährlich 100 Milliarden für die Klimafinanzierung aufzubringen. Das soll bis 2025 mindestens fortgeschrieben werden. Last December, we strengthened our climate plan to reduce more emissions, including with a world-leading price on pollution. My solemn duty to protect America and its citizens. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. I wouldn't judge President Trump because uh, President Obama made a respective decision. Maybe the acting president didn't believe that they were well thought out. Maybe he thinks that there is not sufficient resource available. How would you both combat climate change and support job growth at the same time, starting with you, President Trump? You have two minutes uninterrupted. So uh, we have the Trillion Trees program. We have so many different programs. I do love the environment, but what I want is the cleanest crystal clear water, the cleanest air. We have the best lowest number in carbon emissions, which is a big standard that I notice Obama goes with all the time. Not Joe. I haven't heard Joe use the term because I'm not sure he knows what it represents or means, but I have heard Obama use it. And we have the best carbon emission numbers that we've had in 35 years under this administration. We are working so well with industry, but here's what we can't do. Look at China, how filthy it is. Look at Russia. Look at India. It's filthy. The, the air is filthy. The Paris Accord, I took us out because we were going to have to spend trillions of dollars and we were treated very unfairly. When they put us in there, they did us a great disservice. They were going to take away our businesses. I will not sacrifice tens of millions of jobs, thousands and thousands of companies because of the Paris Accord. It was so unfair. China doesn't kick in until 2030. Russia goes back to a low standard and we kicked in right away. It would have been it would have been it would have destroyed our businesses. Vice President and we Biden. haven't destroyed our industries. Vice President Biden, two minutes to you uninterrupted. Climate change, climate warming. The global warming is an existential threat to humanity. The moment that the idea of man-made climate change entered the political mainstream of the largest emitter on Earth, the USA. For the vast majority of countries in the world, climate change is going to be an absolute disaster by the end of the century. If you draw a line across the planet along the northern borders of the United States and Canada, just about every place south will be a significant loser by the end of the century. This is because human productivity has been found to be at its highest, somewhere between an average annual temperature of 11 and 15 degrees Celsius. Any higher or lower, and productivity for civilization begins to decrease. Right now, this zone for maximum human productivity exists across the continental United States, Europe, Anatolia, China, Korea, and Japan. Because of global climate change, by the end of the 21st century, it's believed that this productivity zone will instead stretch across the Arctic through Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Scandinavia, and most significantly, Russia. As a direct result, the economies of the continental United States, Brazil, China, the European Union, and India will all struggle with adapting to this change. Anger, frustration, outrage growing in Shanghai in China, a city of 25 million people been locked up in their homes since the end of March as a surge in COVID cases led officials to impose these hard lockdowns under China's strict zero COVID policy. Well, if you think Wuhan 2020 was bad, Welcome to Shanghai 2022. This has been like no other lockdown, and it's in the country's cosmopolitan and most affluent financial hub of all places. So this door behind me, this is my exit to the outside alleyway. And late last night, I heard them taping up my door along with the doors of my neighbors. They're placing a paper seal 
so as to keep it closed. Some buildings with positive cases inside, well, they're locked shut from the outside. They're using bicycle locks and padlocks just to keep people in. Like, I don't, I don't think we're currently doomed. Um, my concern with the CO2 is not kind of where we are today, um, or, or even, you know, the current uh, rate, rate of carbon generation, but really, uh, if, it could, if, we, if the carbon generation keeps accelerating and we keep getting um, a, uh, that, that uh, uh, increase in the, in the Keeling curve, you know, the CO2 possibility yeah. in the atmosphere, and if, 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 if we keep going and if we're complacent, uh, then I think we, we could, th there's some risk of, of um, sort of non-linear climate change. Can climate change cause wars? Well, the answer might surprise you. In 2014, the Department of Defense categorized climate change as a threat multiplier that could make future conflicts both more frequent and more deadly. Climate change is directly related to the growth of terrorism. Скажите, как вы относитесь к глобальному потеплению? Положительно. Почему? У него будет теплее. Никак. Слышали что-то об этом? Разумеется. Что думаете? Я не думаю о том, на что не могу повлиять. Да, да. Yes. The CIA will help back research that the National Academy of Sciences is doing on ways to mitigate climate change. And the way that they're doing that is they're trying to figure out uh, how they can manipulate the environment. Mm. So, of course, conspiracy theorists are having their heads explode right now. This is something that they've been warning us about for quite some time. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bill Gates is backing the first high-altitude experiment of one radical climate change solution, creating a massive chemical cloud that could cool the Earth. It's called solar geoengineering, and it's highly controversial. It would look something like this. Thousands of planes would fly very high and use nozzles to inject millions of tons of light-reflecting particles into the stratosphere. It would create a thin chemical cloud of those particles around the whole planet, blocking some sunlight from reaching the surface. It would mimic a giant volcanic eruption, which we know cools the Earth. It could eradicate blue sky. You start increasing the amount of diffuse light and you have less direct light, which is the same thing as saying it looks hazy and white. Got that? 75% chance. Complete environmental chaos. That's what former Vice President Al Gore predicted back in his movie in 2006. It didn't happen. There he said back in 2009, 75% chance, Arctic ice gone within the next five years, seven years. Eight years later, Arctic still here. Let's look at fossil fuel stocks like Exxon and Chevron. They're closing the day higher. We got Greeny stocks, Tesla, and First Solar closing the day higher as well. Let's bring in the author of the skeptical environmentalist. He is Bjorn Lomborg. Why didn't Al Gore's predictions come true? Good to see you, by the way. <laughs> Good to be here. So, look, there's so many of these uh, catas catastrophic predictions in, in climate conversation, and it's very easy to make them. You get a lot of attention. The climate's a complex system influenced by everything from our orbit to gases in our atmosphere to volcanoes. But weather isn't climate, and a few temperature records do not a complete global climate history make. It wasn't until the mid-19th century that we were collecting enough data in enough places to figure out an average temperature for the whole world. Do we believe what Ben Franklin or Thomas Jefferson wrote in their weather journal? Can we really trust all those old records? The U.S. Intel Agency now investing in weather and ways to change it? Why? So what is the CIA spending $630,000 trying to do? Well, they're looking into something called climate uh, engineering or geoengineering, which is a way to manipulate the climate to mitigate the effects of global warming. So they are looking at a planet they, they think is warming up, and they think that maybe this might pose a national security threat. Why are we fighting against CO2 instead of plastic and trash that are the size of a continent on our planet? Who is this good for? Well, let's dig in. We'll start with a quote from the president of the American Academy of Science, Frederick Seitz and this announcement that was signed by 15,000 of his colleagues. There is no convincing scientific evidence that anthropological emissions of CO2, methane, or other greenhouse gases cause or could cause catastrophic warming of the Earth's atmosphere and the destruction of its climate in the future.
According to the largest survey of U.S. weather forecasters, only half of the men and women paid to predict the weather believe global warming is happening. I couldn't understand the Civil War if I didn't understand what happened in the drought. This drought was the worst in Syria's modern history and happened in the four years just before the revolution. Over a million people were displaced. Climate change has caused the Mediterranean region to dry out, resulting in longer, more severe droughts. It was right here, but look, it's that high. <laughs> Bearing down on me. It was like the apocalypse, mate. It was like hell on earth. 2020 is proving to be a very challenging year. It's changed some of our landscapes, perhaps permanently. It's changed our people. Quote, this is where the first climate wars will break out. Military strategists are now preparing for imminent warfare sparked by the effects of climate change. This is a preview of how climate change and biodiversity loss will challenge the peace. They, like the pandemic, will raise the heat on places already simmering with broken governments and heavy historical legacies, which in turn inflames inequality, poverty, and resentment. 
That means more people on the move looking for jobs or safety. It means more suffering, more friction and hostility, maybe even more conflict. As we're seeing now, the world's great powers are by no means immune. For all countries in a changing climate, there will be more disasters that threaten health, food, water, and energy. This is what could happen if we don't slow down the pace of global warming. Already, there are signs. The one group of people have decided that they are the ones to save the world. How dare you question us because we know what's right. I can't afford an electric car. I can't afford a heat pump. Most people can't afford that. The people that the campaigners should be focusing on is the government, not on ordinary mm. people. Let's sit down with a placard. Let's advertise to my friends what a great person I am. While the rest of the ordinary people who have to go to work can't get to work. We talk about it, sing about it, and definitely complain about it. The weather. But have we come to the point where we can control the weather? An explosive film has shown that millions of trees are destroyed in the name of renewable energy. It also claims that renewables are as bad as fossil fuels. It takes an incredible amount of energy to mine and process all of the materials that go into building something like this. You use more fossil fuels to do this than you're getting benefit from it. You would have been better off just yeah. burning the fossil fuels in the first place. The number of labs working with dangerous pathogens has quickly grown into the thousands. And there have been many accidental releases. Smallpox killed over 300 million people in the century before it was eradicated. In 1978, it escaped from a British lab, claiming a final victim. And more recently in the U.S., abandoned vials of smallpox were found in a cardboard box. After World War I, multiple state governments launched their own biological weapons programs as a research endeavor and stockpiling countermeasure. These things are living organisms, so they are very finicky. In the Soviet biological weapons program, they tried to create a plague bacteria that was resistant to several different antibiotics. They created this super duper plague weapon, but actually it was a horrible weapon because it would just die. Trees have in fact charged that this is a part of a plan by Russia to lay the groundwork of using bio and chemical weapons in Ukraine, something that Moscow, remember, has been accused of doing in Syria. In 1968, about 6,000 sheep died near this government facility. They were poisoned by a chemical weapon named VX. Experiments on sheep, mosquitoes, and even civilians. The Russian accusations uh, are absurd. They're laughable. And, uh, you know, in the words of my Irish Catholic grandfather, a bunch of malarkey. There's nothing to it. It's classic Rus Russian propaganda. And, uh, and uh, I wouldn't, uh, if I were you, I, I, wouldn't give it, uh, I wouldn't give it a drop of ink worth, worth paying attention to. It's a new virus. Nobody knows if it was born in a lab or because a human ate some animal they shouldn't have. But it is dead. And the military knows all about this chemical, biological and radiological warfare. Could we be fighting a new war? I guess. Which country's GDP has grown the most? I'm not going to tell you.